In a previous exercise, we used the jQuery toggle method to hide and display elements within the DOM. When I click the header row, the div below it collapses. When I click the header div, again, it toggles back to display the contents, which are these tips for eating out. But you can see it's not very elegant. It simply goes away and then comes back on the toggle of the header div. But we can make this a lot more elegant, a lot more slick with some predefined jQuery effects. So within the jQuery library, we have these methods that allow us to animate this uh, effect of hiding and displaying certain elements. So I'll show you the finished animation. And you can see that the effect itself is going to be very different. It's not going to be an instant hide and an instant show. By passing more arguments to the toggle method, you wind up with an effect that looks like this. So I'll click that header div again. And you can see we'll have an animation as it closes up and an animation as it opens again. And this is all accomplished by calling the same toggle method, but passing to it uh, some additional arguments. So you can see we already have a document ready function. We're already responding to the document being loaded with some jQuery. Line 50, for example, sets the cursor to a pointer when the user is over that div whose ID is box header. We also are going to respond to the click function directly below. And this is where we'll animate the call to the toggle method. So you can see a series of commented steps here. And let's take a look at the document structure. We've got an outer div whose ID is box, followed by the short div, which is the header box that gets clicked. And then we respond to the click by taking the div directly below it, whose ID is box content and we basically hide and show it. This is essentially what the toggle method does. But in this exercise, we're going to pass some additional arguments to that method that'll invoke the animation. So you'll place your cursor underneath step one, and we'll begin by accessing the div that we need. So we use the jQuery selector. In this case, what we're looking for is once again a div, but the div has the ID of box content. Remember, this is the div underneath the box header. Now we're going to go ahead and invoke the toggle method again. The difference is we'll be passing to it an argument to indicate, in this case, the speed of the animation. So in the previous exercise, we just called the toggle method. You saw how that worked. It just hide and show. But now we have the option to pass in this argument that represents the speed at which the animation is going to play that actually does the toggling of this div whose ID is box content. So we'll pass in slow as the one and only argument. And we'll go ahead and save and test this. And I'll go ahead and click that header div now. And you'll see that it is now animated. Now, that may not be the animation that you expect, uh, but there are other arguments we can pass to control this animation. So that's the first argument we're going to pass in there, which is the speed. And you saw the effect that that had. It didn't simply hide and show the element, but it animated the hiding and showing. Now, let's go back and take a look at the other arguments that we can pass in here. So let's just swap it out for fast and save and test it. So you see the exact same animation, but obviously the speed is much faster. Let's return to our code. And this time we're going to place the cursor underneath the comment for step two. And once again, we'll pass into the jQuery method, the selector, which is the box header this time. So. What we'll do differently here is simply call a different animated effect. So this one is fade out. And you notice we're also passing in the argument, which is duration or speed. So we're going to put in normal there. And to truly see this effect, let's comment out line 53. This way, we're not doing the toggle effect at all, but only the fade out. And bear in mind, the fade out now is on the box header, which is the part that we are responding to, the click. So let's save this, test it in the browser. And you can see that the fade out worked, but it worked on the div that was responding to the click, which was that box header div. And you saw that it faded out at a normal speed. And that's the argument we gave. Now let's try taking a look at both effects at the same time. So what we'll do is we'll remove the comments from the toggle effect. So the box content is going to continue to uh, animate, but the box header is going to fade out as well. So there's nothing wrong with invoking two different effects uh, on two different DOM elements. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So there's the box that is now going to get the fade. 
box content gets the toggle. But if we set that to just the outer box, you'll see that that's what's going to get toggled now. So instead of the previous jQuery selector, we're now doing the toggle effect on the div whose ID is box. Remember, this is the outer div. Let's go ahead and save and test this. And the outer div receives the toggle. And that was very quick, but you could see the effect taking place. So there's nothing wrong with using several effects at once. In this case, we use the toggle and we use the fade out. Let's comment toggle now of the outer div and do the same thing for the box header. So we're going to remove the two effects and place our cursor underneath the comment for step four. Again, using the jQuery method, we'll locate the content we want, which is the box content. That's the food tips. And we'll use an entirely different effect here. This one is called the slide toggle. And you can see that it, it's asking for duration. We're going to pass in slow. And you'll see now what happens during a slide toggle. You may have noticed the all done function there, which is empty. Don't worry about that. We're going to address that in a later exercise. So that won't be used here. So you can save and test this. Now remember, it's the tips below that get the slide toggle. So we have the top div, tips for eating out, the div directly below it, which are the actual bulleted list of tips. And that is now getting an effect known as a slide toggle. So in this exercise, we've seen that we can take some simple methods of jQuery, such as the toggle method, and then easily provide animation arguments so that we can not only create the animation itself, but we can control it and things like its speed and what exactly gets animated and so forth.